Thank you, Mark. Over to you, Chairman. OK, thank you very much, Amy. OK, thank you, everyone. Well, good evening. Uh, welcome to this evening's Healthy Living and Social Care Scrutiny Committee, uh, Tuesday the 11th of May 2021 at 5pm. May I remind everyone present that the meeting is being live streamed as well as recorded via the internet and is recording archived for future viewing. Could all participants please mute themselves when not speaking in order to avoid any background noise or feedback when other participants are speaking? If a participant wishes to speak, can they please put their hand up on the screen or use the raise hand function? I'll keep a lookout for both. Please ensure that all debate is raised verbally and not via the chat function for the sake of the recording. The chat function may be used to highlight any technical issues or to grab the attention of myself, the chairman or democratic services officer. If any participant has a difficulty hearing or being heard, when they are addressing the committee, then they should let the chairman or democratic officer know. If they have a webcam, then they should try turning this off as this will help the broadband or Wi-Fi bandwidth so they can at least be here and be heard. OK, thank you very much. And now moving straight on to the agenda. Part one, um, agenda item one is appointment of vice chairman or vice chairwoman. Um, are there any nominees? I see we have two up hands. Uh, Rachel Newton Finn. Yes, please, Chair. I'd like to propose Councillor Janice Charles as the Vice Chairman. OK, thank you very much. And I shall second that, seeing there's only three of us. I'd like okay. to nominate uh, Councillor Neil Thomas, please. OK, Councillor Avid. Uh, do we have a seconder for that? Councillor Jarvis, are, are you the seconder? I'll second that, yes. OK, fabulous. Thank you very much. OK, um, are there anyone else? OK, uh, Amy. Um, yes, Chair, well, so you have, two no you have two nominations this evening, Councillor Charles and Councillor Neil Thomas. Um, we'll take mm -hmm. the vote in order of the nominations. So mm -hmm. first would be a, a committee vote for Councillor Charles. So if we, um, on your agenda in front of you, Chairman, if you could run through your committee members and ask for each vote. Um, OK. Then, yeah, are you OK if you've got that to hand? And then we yeah, can... Yeah, just... Chairman, can I withdraw my nomination? Oh, that, that was Councillor Charles, Charles, Chairman. Charles. Yep, so you're... Okay. Up in Yes, yeah, so your only nomination on the table now. Um, can I just check, Councillor Jarvi, you're happy to remove your seconder for ca the... Uh, sorry, Councillor Nugent Finn, you're happy to remove... I, cer I certainly am, yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. So the only nomination on the table this evening is for Councillor Neil Thomas. Therefore, with one nomination, Chairman, you're happy to take the vote on no dissent. So as long as the, nobody has any dissent for that, then the vote will pass. Okay. Can I ask, is there any dissent from the committee for nomination for vice chair for Councillor Neil Thomas, please? Nothing at all from me. Okay. Thank you very much all. Uh, thank you, Janice, for withdrawing. That's very, very charming of you. Thank you. OK, Chairman, you're happy to progress with the agenda now. OK, thank you very much. Uh, welcome aboard, Councillor Thomas. OK, um, on to agenda item two. Apologies for absence. Do we have anyone? I haven't received any, Chairman. I believe, I'm not sure if Councillor John Thomas has joined us yet. Um, I haven't received any apologies for him, so he may be on his way. Um, if my colleague Mark Thomas would mind giving him a call just to check that everything's OK with his connection. Yeah, I'll check with him now, Amy. Thank you, Mark. Back to you, Chairman. OK, thank you very much. And now on to agenda item three, which is the minutes of the meeting held on the 9th of March 2021. Um, do we want to run through the minutes or are we happy to pass it as is? I move the minutes. OK, thank you very much. I second, um, I second that, Mr Chairman. OK, thank you, Councillor Jarvi. So we got a uh, proposer and second to this, so we're all clear with that. And then now on to agenda item four, which is to receive declarations of interest. Do we have any 
one on this agenda item. I can't see any hands up. I believe Councillor Jarvie's hand is raised. Is that a legacy hand, Councillor? OK, that's yeah, that, sorry, that was from, that was from the past. So I've, I've deleted it. <laughs> no Thank, you. Sorry about that. <laughs> Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Good housekeeping there. And now we're on to agenda item five, which is part of a report of the director of the social services, which is family information service annual report 2020. And I believe we have uh, Becky on here to yep. take us through it. You also Hi, Becky. Have you also have um, Gaynor Jones, Chairman, that's joined. Uh, hi, Gaynor. Thank you very much for joining. <laughs> OK, Becky, over to you. OK, thank you. Yeah, my name's Becky Wickett and I lead the Family Information Service team in um, social services. We're in the performance and information section. Yeah, I'm just here today to, um, to present to you. It's our annual report from 2019-20. Uh, because we were unable to do it last year. But what I will do is just give an update on what we've been doing over the last year as well, because it's um, some significant information. So just as a bit of background, the Family Information Service, we provide information and guidance to families in the Vale. Parents and carers contact us, um, as well as childcare providers um, and other providers and professionals that work with families. We re receive a whole host of inquiries from families. Um, a lot of them are regarding childcare, so parents needing childcare or family support services. Um, we also administer the childcare offer for the Vale. So this is where working parents may be entitled to childcare funding when the child is aged three and four. So it's a Welsh Government initiative and it's to encourage parents back into work. They can contact us, um, sign up to the childcare offer and then they can receive funding towards their childcare. Um, we also administer the index for children and young people with disabilities and additional needs in the Vale. So that's a, a voluntary register that families can sign up to. And what happens is they'll receive regular information from us. Um, about what services and support and events there are for children, young people and their families who've got additional needs. Um, just going through our sort of performance from 2019-20, which seems like a long time ago now, so I won't go into it in too much detail, um, but just to give you a bit of a picture. In that year, we received just over 2,000 inquiries and that could be, you know, people contacting us directly over the phone, people emailing us. We do a lot of outreach, so we go out to um, schools, events. So that could be inquiries via outreach. And we also have a large social media presence. So we do get inquiries via social media as well. That was 11, um, sorry, an 11 percent increase on the previous year. So our inquiries are increasing. Um, almost half of those inquiries were regarding the childcare offer. So we do receive a lot um, of child childcare offer inquiries from parents and carers. What we also ensure that we do is we have a database of all childcare in the Vale, as well as other support services. And all of that information is held on the Dewis Cymru website. So we have to make sure that that information is up to date. And we support our childcare providers in the Vale by providing them with regular information, training, information on grants and so on. Um, we had quite a lot of events as well in 2019-20 when we were able to sort of get out and about. Um, we held a big event for families and that was held in Romney Park as well as a large Christmas party. And we partner up with our lots of partners as well, including like our sports and play team, Fly and Start, um, our Family Spirit Advice Line and various other providers. So in the last year, things looked a bit different. Um, so our service obviously was very different. So as of March last year, when we did go into lockdown, our family information service took on the role of processing all of the applications for key worker parents that required childcare. So it was called the Coronavirus Childcare Assistance Scheme. So we called it CCAS. Um, this funding was provided by Welsh Government and we had to set up this scheme really quickly to ensure that those key worker parents were able to have childcare and the, the childcare was funded 
So we set this process up and overall we processed 442 applications um, and we were able to support 312 children actually in childcare at that time. Um, there was a large application process that was followed. Everything was done online. Um, all applications had to be verified for eligibility and so on. So it was a real change for our family information service team. And we worked really closely with our colleagues, our childcare colleagues in education and Fly and Start to ensure that it was all um, implemented as efficiently as we could. Um, it was a really, you know, it was quite a stressful time for the team. Everyone started working from home, but um, everyone really got on board. We had some really, really positive feedback um, that I know I've shared there in the report. So over the last year, uh, we have received over 2,600 inquiries, which is a large increase on the previous year, and over a 1,000 of those inquiries were related to COVID in some way. Over that time as well, we had a lot of inquiries from our actual childcare settings because it was a very unsettling time for them. Lots of them had to close. We were trying to ask some of them to remain open to support key workers. So that whole time we were providing that ongoing information to them. And we did that via e-bulletins, over the phone, various different ways. And just to keep the sector really going, there were lots of grants as well that have, have been available to the childcare providers. So it's ensuring that, that information has gone out um, and has been accessed as well. So, yeah, so it's been quite a busy, well, a really busy time over this last year. Um, there's been so many different changes as well with regards to what parents are able to access, what they can't access. So our inquiries have been in high demand and we ensure that, you know, our information is up to date. Um, as I said, we send out regular e-bulletins, regular posts over our social media pages and we keep our website up to date as well. Um, and we do all of this by working in partnership with all of our colleagues. So just going forward now, as, as hopefully things are starting to ease, we are looking to see what we can do out in the community over the summer. As things are starting to open, we're ensuring that all the information is up to date on Dowis Cymru, so where activities and sessions can open, um, we're ensuring that that's up to date. There's been um, a child development fund that is also now available through the Welsh Government. So in January, we actually helped um, support that and we employed someone to take on the role of being able to source childcare. So that fund is for parents who've got children aged 0 to 5 that have been really impacted by COVID that might not have been able to access any kind of socialisation. They may be delayed now um, in their development. So this funding can help them access childcare. So we've been helping to source the childcare for them. Um, and we're hoping now that this funding is going to continue for a further at least six months. So we're just waiting for that confirmation. Um, but it's things like that that have come out that we've then been able to support with. Um, so going forward, yeah, we're just hoping that we can um, carry on with being able to support parents and letting them know the changes um, and what they can access. And especially for new parents as well. They, you know, when they've had a baby over this last year, it's been so difficult. They haven't been able to have that social support. So it's just ensuring that we've got all of that information um, up to date. Um, and I think that's probably all I wanted to cover. Has anyone got any questions or Gaynor, did you want to add anything to that? Um, I just wanted to say how proud I am of, of the team for their response to COVID. Um, you know, they've been really innovative in some of the ideas that they've come up with. They are a very close knit team and, you know, I, I couldn't have asked more from them uh, during the last 12 months. It's been excellent. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, thank you, Becky, for the overview and the, of the report. Uh, Councillor Thomas, would you like to ask? Yes, please. I've got a couple. Uh, f firstly, I mean, I agree. Uh, th th thank you, Chair. Uh, I agree. I mean, thank you, uh, Gaynor uh, and Becky, or Becky and Gaynor in this case, uh, for, for the report. It's it it is excellent. It's well done, and I don't. I would like to echo your comments, Gaynor, and thank all your staff uh, uh, as well uh, for the work they've done, particularly over the last year, where it's been uh, truly testing. I think would be. <laughs> right way to phrase it. Um, I've got a couple of questions though. Uh, on page nine of the 
um, the annual report 2019. And um, there's a reference to the referrals and where they're coming from. I, and I noticed there were no actual GPs. Um, you've got the health visitors doing quite uh, doing doing a Trojan service and so on, but nothing coming from GPs. How happy are we that all the children who are eligible to sign up are signed up? Is is kind of my other question. I notice in the later later part of the report, the the um, index thing that's further on, um, uh, one of the first comments on on the second page is uh, which I'd known about index a lot earlier. When my son was originally diagnosed, I think the NHS needs to promote you more at the diagnosis stage. And I think that's a significant comment in, in, in light of what I just asked about. Are, are these people being alerted early enough by the right people? Thank you. Um, yeah, so we work really closely with uh, our colleagues, the Families First Advice Line. Um, whereas before they were set up, we were working, I guess, more closely with health colleagues. What now happens is where a child is diagnosed with a disability, they're signposted to the Families First Advice Line as that first port of call, and then the referral would come via them to us because the um, the advice line can offer, I suppose, more advice and um, if they need a visit or anything like that, then they're, they're in a better place, I guess, to do that. They can also refer to other services that need a direct referral. So they're sort of that that um, that gateway into various different referral services. And what they would then do is discuss the index and ensure that you know they're they're linked to it. So that's how it's working at the moment. I mean, you know, we'd always we want to be able to increase our referrals even more. So there's always something we can do. We want to ensure our information is available in the surgeries as well. But yeah. Can I, can I just come back? Um, so the, the, the referrals are actually coming from, from the parents. Uh, the, they're being advised to contact you and then you then they contact you. There's, there's no mechanism for perhaps uh, professionals to say, well, look, I've got this family who are, are in trouble. Can you contact them and tell them what services you've got and whether, ask yeah. them? So maybe yeah, they... is, is there any scope for doing it that way around? Yeah, and that does happen now. It's it's just, yeah, I was just discussing how it happens when they're actually diagnosed and then what the paediatricians would do. But we receive our, a lot of our referrals for the index are via the special needs health visitor and they would come directly from the health visitor. They would contact us and say, yes, can you contact this parent? I've already discussed it with them and, you know, they're happy for you to contact them. So we do rely a lot on our referrals coming from those professionals, especially the health visitors, that would be that sort of first point of contact with the family. Thank you. I, I was I was keen to know that there, there there were multiple avenues for people to get in touch both ways. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and uh, that we're offering a really wraparound service. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Nugent Finn. Hi there. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Becky, for a great report. And yeah, echo what everybody else has said, really. It's been an unbelievably unprecedented time, put massive pressure on teams to really, you know, think very differently, very dynamically. Um, I don't know about you, but working from home is a challenge in itself. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah, I, I totally get it. And, you know, th thanks for doing the job so well. But I, again, I can't help but be positive about some of this because it's made us think very differently and engage in different ways. So lots of silver linings coming out of, of this now. We've got to try and put some positivity on it, really. Um, I, I have got a couple of questions, Becky. And if it's if it's easy, if you want to take them one at a time and I'll, I'll attach them to the numbers in the report. Does that sound OK? Yeah, fine. Uh, the first one, 1 1.7, you've received some funding from Welsh Government with regards to the childcare funding. Do, do you know how much that funding was? Um, I believe it was about 90,000, but I need to double check. It, it came in via Flying Start, mm -hmm. so they've been leading on it. Um, okay. And then we employed an officer to help with that, and I think that cost him was about 6,000 for three months. Okay. But I would need to check it. Okay, if you could, that would be great. Thank you very much indeed. Um, question uh, oh, 2.1. With this, this, obviously, there's been uh, some sort of, uh, you know, we, we've had some handover of um, of staffing, etc. People having children and all of the lovely things in life. Um, and I note that you've got a further member staff through the Kickstart scheme. 
Mm -hmm. So I just want to say really, I'm very, very pleased that that scheme's being used. When I presented that at full council, it was very much poo-pooed by the uh, deputy leader. But actually, this is becoming imperative now to every section of this local authority for what I feel is a two-pronged approach, because not only are we employing a young person, but obviously you're getting the support and the extra additionality in terms of um, staffing that you need. But then at the, at the end of the report, it does say that there's no current considerations with regards to employment, but that kickstart will end. So what I'd like to know is what happens to that young person and if there's any further job opportunity. Obviously, you can't answer that now, but I would like it answered when that time comes. Okay. Can I just throw in there? Is, is that okay? Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, very much, we, we are limited to the time scale that we can have this particular yes. individual for. Yes. Um, yes. But this person is one of three kickstart positions that we've got within my two teams. Fantastic. And I'm very keen to mm. um, make the most of, of, of that scheme. So when yes. these placements come to an end, yeah. um, I'd certainly be looking for somebody else to come on board. There's that's more than it's... enough work for them, that's for certain. That... Again, if that's music to my ears, it's fantastic. As I said, it's very much a win-win, isn't it? You're employing young people, they're getting the skills and experience, and you're getting the support that you need in your team. It's, it's. I'm, I'm very, very pleased to hear this. That's great. So hence why I'm asking what the outcome is going to be at the end of it. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, these uh, 2.2, Cardiff are deciding to withdraw from the regional contract. So how will this affect our service in the Vale, if at all, Becky? Um, yeah, the, they decided to withdraw because the the post holder was basically working full time hours, but across Cardiff mm -hmm. and the Vale, and they realised that the potential is much bigger, so they wanted to employ their own full time officer. So mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's worked really well. But mm -hmm. yeah, we're still working closely with Cardiff, okay, um, and we're sharing information where it can be shared about what service you know if there are services in Cardiff that are available for the Vale, then we're ensuring that. You know, we are working with them to make sure that goes out to parents. Mm. Um, we hold regular meetings with them. It's just that uh, they want to expand it um, in Cardiff. Yeah. And things are, you know, some things are slightly different. Uh, they're mm. going to look at their eligibility and things like that. But, yeah, we are going to be still working closely with them. OK, so you don't anticipate any particular knock on effect to us then. We're just going to sort of continue in our own vein. Yeah. 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 Great. Lovely. Um to, a little bit of 2.2 and 2.3 here now. Uh, again, there's uh, there's going to be changes to the systems. And again, just thinking about some of our more experienced child minders who perhaps, can, again, come hand in hand with being perhaps of, of an older generation. If we are going to be implementing more systems which are going to be uh, online or uh, certainly IT specific, you know, how are they going to manage that? And will you sort of do a bit of an induction course to make people feel like they're, they're being supported through all of this change? Yeah, it's um, it's a really big issue. And to yeah. be fair, I mean, Welsh Government are consulting on this the whole way through and they realise that um, it's going to be a big ask for yes. target settings, especially, like you say, some childminders. Yes. So they're going to be putting together a training pack, like a national training package anyway, mm -hmm. that we can then deliver locally but our engagement officer Kath she mm. um you know she can actually go out to childminders mm. when she's allowed she mm. can go to them and actually sit down with them and help them mm. um and that she's been doing that in the past it's just been more tricky this last year of course but, yeah it is really recognized and we're going to work closely with them and with Welsh government as well we're okay. hoping it's going to simplify things Yes, yeah, yeah. I just don't want to lose some of the quality child mm. care staff that we have because this is the sort of thing that would put them off. So, yeah, yeah. as long as there's a, a, a bit of a hand-holding exercise going through there, that's great. <clears throat> Has there been any specific funding uh, placements uh, in private or, or the uh, private run nursery uh, child care settings during COVID? <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry. Sorry, can you say that again? Please? Yeah, of course. Uh, has there been any specific funding placements for private uh, nursery settings during the COVID time? <clears throat> so do you mean where child children have actually been funded to yes, attend settings? Yes, individually, yes, yes, yeah. Only um, that I'm aware of, you know, through the CCAS scheme, where mm. settings received funding via CCAS, yeah. um, if, if the parents met the eligibility criteria. Yeah. And also now through the Child Development Fund, yep. they're receiving childcare 
or funding for childcare for a number yep. of hours per week. So that again, that's on eligibility and referrals are coming in via health and social care staff. Um, and the settings are able to sign on both occasions. Settings were able to sign up to these um, funding streams. I can't think yeah. of the right word now. That's but yeah, thing. so they were all given that opportunity. Obviously, through CCAS, it's whether they they wanted to reopen and whether they felt like it was going to be sustainable. Yes. But a large majority of them, you know, they did reopen. Of course. And I guess yeah. The CCAS, yeah. 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 But, um, yeah, other than that, I'm I'm not aware of any other funded placements. OK, um, sort of leads me on to the next question, really. But uh, it, it, how, how have we managed the CSIW inspections? How has that looked during this lockdown, if at all? Um, I, I don't know 100 percent. I wouldn't like to say 100 percent and speak for them. I know mm -hmm. they have been carrying out virtual assessments. They haven't been going into settings at all. Okay. Um, but yeah, they've been been doing it virtually, but I'm not sure of whether they've allowed like a longer delay and things like I mean, I can look into it for you. OK, that would be great. Thank you very much, Becky. Um, I have regular um, for well, it's, it's either weekly or fortnightly. It's kind of moved to fortnightly now and um, meetings yeah. with um, a senior inspector from CIW. Yeah. And we talk about all services within the Vale. Mm -hmm. um, and during that time, no childcare provision has come up as as. Yeah needing to be discussed and I know that they are now um, at the point where they are going out and starting to do inspections again they've been doing that for about the last four weeks um, so so uh, we've we've now got a, a new uh, program as well of actually having inspection reports automatically shared with a named person within the local authority yeah. so we put down our generic contracting address so those reports as and when they're published we will automatically get a, a copy of that if the service is based in the Vale. That's that's very encouraging. Thank you for that, Gaynor. Um, let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. I've had a two. I've had two Zoom meetings with um, some private uh, childcare settings. One in particular uh, has, has been brought to my attention about uh, sort of observations now in sort of delay and uh, milestones because obviously of, of lockdown, not being able to attend, and now obviously the uh, communication block of a mask. I'm just wondering if there's any specific funding for any sensory equipment uh, for, for settings. Um, that might be something you can take away and bring back another time. But um, I, I, there is there is sort of there is some various inquiries around this at the minute now, and specifically for people for children with additional needs as well in settings. Okay, we'll certainly look into that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Nugent Finn. Um, Councillor Evert. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Just a quick one to Becky, please. Um, I noticed that um, the information services for not to twenty years old. So, for example, as counsellors, we get casework with uh, non-attendance of a teenager in school. Could we come to you in the first instance, or could the family come to you, rather than go straight to the education department because there could be other issues going on? Yeah, they can. Yeah, definitely, they can come to us, and we can um, have that general discussion with them. It depends, I guess, on what their support needs are. A lot of inquiries like that we would then put through to our family's first advice line. If they needed a bit more um, support or, like I said, like a home visit or referral maybe to different services. But, yeah, that, that would be fine. They can come. We do get calls uh, for education and we'd work closely then with the, our colleagues in education. Thank you, Councillor. Abit, would anyone else like to make any comments or ask a question? OK, I think we're all. Quite, yes. Thank you both. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Gaynor. Thank you for the report and thank you for all the work you're doing. And please uh, uh, relay the thanks to your teams. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. OK, brilliant. Thank you very much. And we now we can move. Sorry, Chairman. Um, just yeah, I was going to just reply. ask. Yeah. <laughs> Are we going for with the recommendations as per the report then, please? OK. Javi saying, can she hurry up? Me, because I got a lot to ask, you know. Councillor Nugent Finn. I just. Councillor Sorry, that's um... not on mute at the moment. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Chairman, did I interrupt you then? <laughs> um, yeah, just about. Um, so let's have a quick look at the 
recommendations. Uh, so we've considered it and um, and we are happy to both uh, keep on having annual updates regarding the information service. Are we happy to do Absolutely. carry with those? Recommendations. Yeah. OK, thank you very thank much. You. Uh, seconder. Can, I, can I just take the opportunity to check with Becky and Gaynor? Obviously, the annual reports have gone out slightly out of sync because of the national pandemic. Um, when we're saying about a, an additional um, annual report, would you be envisaging that for for this month again in 12 months time? Um, yeah, that, that would be fine with us. That's not a problem. OK, thank you very much. OK, great. Do we have a seconder as well? Um, I believe Councillor Thomas has have seconded, haven't you, Councillor Thomas? Yeah. OK, brilliant. Excellent. If, if we're all good with that, we can move on to agenda item six, which is the fourth quarter scrutiny scrutiny recommendation tracking 2020-2021 proposed annual forward work programme schedule 2021-2022. So I understand that we're, of course, that we're doing this slightly different to previous um, times we've been doing this. So it's more just going through the report and asking if there's any questions and I'm happy to, as is the, the tracking report. Uh, Councillor Gray, I know Dizzy got your hand up. Yeah, sorry, Chair, I, I put it up just sure. before you started talking on this item that you turned away. So um, it was to try and neatly put between items, uh, spoken to Councillor John Thomas, um, uh, just for the benefit of the meeting. Unfortunately, officer's apologies have been held up by uh, working commitments uh, this evening. So uh, um, if those could be noted on the minutes, please, Amy. Thank you. Yes, noted. Thank you. Great. Thanks, you, Councillor Gray. Um, so I've had a look at the work programme and I seem to be OK and happy with it. Does anyone have any comments or questions or things we should highlight? I don't see anyone got their hands up. Um, Amy, I, is there anything that we've missed uh, process wise or we're just happy to note as is? Uh, no, thank you, Chairman. If the committee have no further questions, obviously um, the committee are used to the structure of the report. Um, the forward work programme, um, based on the recommendations you have today, um, the recommendation is asking for you as a committee for permission to publish that forward work programme. Um, officers have obviously have, have already contributed into creating that document um, and, and they're happy with that. So I will publish that and then use that to build our agendas. Um, for subsequent meetings um, and the reason why we are now asking um, the chairman yourself and or Councillor Gray if he wishes to comment on the cabinet board work program that's also attached in the report um, is just that in previous meetings of the scrutiny chairman and vice chairman group um, it was agreed that it would be beneficial for the committee to take more lead and ownership of the report which is effectively in their ownership um, so therefore going forward the chairman will will present and I will offer advice um, as, as your advising officer if required. OK, thank you, Amy. Thanks for the explanation. Are we happy then? Do we have do we need to propose a second? This as well, this agenda item. Or yes, just happy? I do have a question, actually, just just sure. one. Um, we had uh, the telecare and the update on the on the um, uh, intelligent personal assistance presentations were scheduled for January 2021. Can you remind me where they where they are going to be coming? Yes, they are on the in your appendix D. Hopefully, um, it should show you that they are expected for the June committee. Right, that's all. Right. Um, so there was a telecare services review that's happened since. Um, so um, it it has slipped several months, but it was it was seen prudent to take that in June after the service review had taken place um, and I will then be um, coordinating with Innovate Trust to make sure that we have their presentation at the same time as our update report from our officers. Mm. So that's the next meeting then, June? Yes, yes. Ex excellent, thank you Amy. Mm. Great, thank you Councillor Thomas. I saw your hand, you had your hand up, Councillor Gray, but I believe you've... No, you're, uh, you're okay. Um, yes, that was um, to answer Neil's point that um, Amy has uh, adequately addressed. So, um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that report, um, especially link it up with the Innovate stuff as well. And uh, 
um, yeah, it's good to see that um, finally getting through on the work program. And just linking on to what um, Amy was saying in regards to the family service annual reports, it's obviously it's a, it's, it's an ongoing um, uh, issue with regards to how we catch up and reprogram in the annual mm -hmm. reports. So I'm I'm really keen um, to understand if there are particular areas you want to hear more of, because clearly getting us uh, getting officers to get things back. Um, to reporting structures um, swiftly enough is is um, is going to take time to get back in sync with where we were, um, and uh, all of those reports are in that forward annual forward work program. So I can see those for cabinet and then for scrutiny. But mm. clearly, as as we go through, if there one's a particular concern, I'm really passionate to hear what the scrutiny committee has to say on them. So um, please do let me know, or, or obviously directly through yourself, chair, to um, uh, to to self services. Thank you, that's great. Councillor Nugent, for your fitness, your hand up. Thank you, Chair. I, I just want to say I'm really welcome in this new uh, procedure of being able to uh, input and access this report. I think this is going to be really effective, um, Councillor Gregg. This is great. It's definitely a, a step in the right direction, isn't it? And it puts some onus and responsibility onto the committee to, uh, to get very much involved. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That's great. Yeah, of course, the you know, full work mm. programme has always been a, a cabinet report mm. that all members have had access mm. to and, and it's been mm. transparent in that sense. Um, mm. And every member's had a chance to feed in or call in or, or, or whatever. But uh, I think, mm. yes, I think you're right. It's positive that it's sort of pre-assuming an involvement and, 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 and that's good to, to have that scrutiny committee's involvement. So, Very um, much so, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Great, thank you, everyone. So are we happy to propose carry on with, with the recommendations. Do we have a proposal and a seconder? Councillor Thomas and Councillor Javi. Okay, thank you very much both. Okay, I believe there's only um, agenda item seven, which is urgency from the chairman, which I don't. Um, so I believe that is it. Um, the next meeting is on the 8th of June, uh, being a Tuesday at 5 p.m. And I think I've got everything covered. Anything from yourself, Amy, before we close off? No, thank you, Chairman. That's everything. OK, brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a good evening and catch you very soon. Thank, thank you, Chair. Bye, all. Good thank evening. You. Thank you very much. Bye.